you know, you spoke about this bias against uh, in India in general. Uh, it seems to be some sort of an Orientalist uh, narrative by the Western media. You know, uh, especially after the Taliban took over, what was very surprising is that you had extremely well-spoken English spokespersons who were communicating to Al Jazeera, BBC, and the CNN. And then uh, you had the Taliban conducting a press conference. You know, they were talking about women's rights and minority rights and whatnot. And of course, it all turned out to be a facade. So in that sense, how can India prepare itself for an uh, information war in the future? Uh, and a counter-propaganda machinery, probably. You see, by moving away from a reactive strategy, okay. number, one, number two, by frankly, you know, ensuring that we, we show that we have equality of faith in India. Prime Minister Modi certainly believes in equality of faith. He certainly believes in treating people of multiple faiths totally equally. He has been very clear in his policies very clear in his speeches about that. Now, that, frankly, has to be manifested in a much more overt way. And you have to make sometimes a demonstration of that. For example, what happened to the case of Pehlu Khan, the individuals who did that ought to have immediately booked as terrorists and very stern action should have been taken against them. I think I, the criminal action has been taken, but it's been forgotten. You need to take very strong action because these individual isolated incidents are being blown up to create a false narrative that this is India. That crazy fanatic who did that to Pehlu Khan represents the Hindu community, which is absolute nonsense. You know, it is completely anti-Sanatani, what, what the gen person did, completely anti-Sanatani. But it, and so today you have a complete misreading of. Uh, of the Hindu community in different parts of the world. The vacuum has been filled with a very toxic narrative manufactured by the Sino-Wahhabi Alliance. Don't forget, don't never underestimate your enemy. You know, if I may say so, I want to say when I, when I was in Beijing on one of my visits, I mean, you know, I, I talked about this uh, trade war where, and other thing with the United States. And I said, you know, well, I, I don't know how long it will last. It may go on for some time. But uh, they were very silent. My, 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 the, 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 my, my, my hosts at dinner. And right. they're very, very much part of the policy establishment of the present uh, individual. They didn't say anything. But just as I was about to leave for the airport on my last day, as I was about to leave for the airport, I was handed over a book. And that book is Mao Zedong's uh, on protracted war. Right. And I read through that book. The Chinese are very subtle in conveying messages. The message they conveyed us, we know this is not a limited war. We know this is not a war limited by time or any other thing. This is a protracted war. As protracted, as existential as the war against Japan. And Mao said there are two lessons in that war. One, Throw out anybody who believes that the Chinese are going to be defeated. Anybody who is defeatist. Secondly, throw out anybody who believes the Chinese will have an easy victory. So we have to be very wary of either of these uh, tendencies in our own ranks. Those who are defeatist, who do not accept the inevitability of an Indian victory, need to be weeded out of the system so they can do no harm. And those who are, you know, like Pollyanna, I mean, who believe, no, 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 we can do this, we can do that. You know, we are, in fact, you know, 100 feet tall, forget about being, you know, 20 feet tall, we're 100 feet tall. Well, they have to weed it out also because these illusions are dangerous. It stops you from preparing. It makes you complacent. You know, Prithviraj won so many times, he was complacent. And finally, he was defeated badly. And then you know what happened? He paid with his life, kingdom. And uh, uh, what happened to the entire country after that is, as you know, history, if I may say so. So I only want to say that we cannot be complacent about these things and we cannot be defeatist. And I think we have to create a system in which we are neither complacent nor defeatist. We have a prime minister who is not complacent or defeatist. We have some of his ministers whom I know personally who are not. In fact, I met one of them today at three o'clock. 
I'm not going to name him on this channel, but he very clearly understood the situation regarding China and regarding Peru. It was very, very clear understanding. Neither the prime minister nor him, and let me be open about it, is external affairs minister, Mr. Jay Shankar. Right. Neither of them have been vocal about China. Both of them. But that is the correct stance to do. They have acted decisively. And I give you the example of our troops moving to the border. That is under the direct inspiration of the prime minister. It is, uh, and Jay Shankar has been in touch with, uh, with UAE, with Israel, with Iran, with so many countries. He has been extremely active. Now, he is not going to go and, and badmouth China or give Xi Jinping any excuse or bring our people around him, Xi Jinping, that, oh, look, Xi Jinping, these guys are, uh, are totally against us, the way you are against them. No, they want to tell Xi Jinping, this is your war. This is a battle you chose. This is a battle you are fighting because you want it. We never wanted it. It's not our battle, but I can we can assure you that we are going to fight and win it. Certainly, the message being conveyed by Prime Minister Modi through his actions is, we will do what it takes to win against any attack by China and Pakistan against ourselves. Right. We will do what it takes to win, and I assure you, we are going to win. But I'd like to say, I stand with uh, Prime Minister Modi and External Affairs Minister Jai Shankar, despite a lot of ridicule in social media, that they're silent and not saying anything. That is the right policy. Don't give any uh, oh, excuse that you are another in Xi Jinping in a, you know, uh, in a different film. You are entirely different from Xi Jinping. And you're showing that by your statesmanlike behavior and your statesmanlike silence and by your quiet and silent determination. With the Americans, I know a lot is going on. Right. With Japan, a lot is going on. With Taiwan, a lot is going on. With the Gulf countries, a lot is going on. The prime minister is not talking about it, but it's happening. It's happening on the ground. And I certainly believe that those who know him will understand that this propaganda is false, that somebody is being targeted because he's a Muslim. It's completely false. I mean, hundreds of people have been targeted by the NCB. The laws are so stringent, and if I may say so, so draconian, that it's relatively easy to frame somebody, plant something in somebody that I know one, two or three chief ministers who used to regularly do that in two very important states in India and who basically boasted to me, that's what we do. We lock them up and they never come out because the narcotics law is so terrible. It'll, right. they'll take decades before they come out. They told me, both these chief ministers personally told me long back that this is what they do. So I mean, frankly, that law needs massive changes. We need to concentrate on hard drugs, on drug mafias, drug syndicates, and forget about soft drugs. I'm in favor of legalization. But I'd like to point out very, very clearly that, look, I think Prime Minister Modi is acting correctly. He's also talking correctly. And I think the External Affairs Minister has got his cue from the Prime Minister. He's talking and acting correctly. And I think most of the government is doing the same. And I think that's important. I know action is being taken. Right. So I'm not worried about the lack of talk. I know there is action. I also know that our prime minister is determined that when an attack comes, I'm not using the word if, I'm using the word when. Right. When a Sino-Pak attack comes, India will prevail along with help from its friends. And I think the groundwork is being laid for that very silently very softly and very effectively. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.